Imagine being out at sea. You can taste the salt air, feel the sea breeze, but it's dark. You feel you may be lost, your ship creaking back and forth underneath you, when suddenly you see something in the distance. A welcome sight, a distant glimmer piercing through the dark night, a lighthouse. This light guides your ship and helps bring you back home. Where sea meets land, lighthouses stand as guardians, symbols of maritime safety. But perched on their isolated cliffs, these towering structures have also become the focal point of chilling tales, steeped in mystery and haunted histories. Lighthouses are located on rushing water, which is known as a big conductor of paranormal activity. Today, we're discussing the haunting of the St. Augustine Lighthouse. And stay tuned for the end of the episode, as we're also going to cover some other spooky lighthouses and their ghostly tales. Welcome back to Avery After Dark. I'm your host, Avery Ross. I am so excited for this episode. There's something so alluring yet mysterious about a lighthouse. On the show, we've covered haunted houses, farms, hotels, forests, dorm rooms, and even a haunted bunk bed. So I think it's about time we covered a haunted lighthouse. And many of you have been asking for an episode like this. Quick reminder, if you enjoy this show, leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you're following along wherever you listen to Avery After Dark. And if you want all these episodes ad-free, join the Patreon. You know I like to get right into it, so now it's time. Let's get into today's haunting. It lays claim as the oldest city in the United States. Yes, there is something very special about St. Augustine, Florida. It's the oldest continually inhabited settlement in America, located just 40 miles southeast of Jacksonville, Florida. It's known for its beautiful Spanish colonial architecture, as well as its gorgeous beaches. St. Augustine predates Plymouth Rock, Roanoke. It was established by the Spanish explorer Pedro Menendez de Aviles in 1565. Although beautiful, the city has seen its fair share of horror. It's seen war, immense bloodshed during Queen Anne's War in 1702, and another British seas in 1740. The city has a rich history, but it's one building in particular that has held the public's fascination for years. The St. Augustine Lighthouse, a tower designed to emit light from a system of lamps and lenses to serve as a beacon for navigational aid for ships. They can also assist aerial navigation. Lighthouses were once widely used, but the number of operational structures has declined due to the expense of maintenance and the rise in more effective electronic navigational systems. The modern era of lighthouses began at the turn of the 18th century, and the St. Augustine Lighthouse has existed in some form or another since 1586 and is known as the earliest permanent aid to navigation in the continental U.S. That is amazing. By 1870, beach erosion was threatening the first lighthouse, causing it to actually fall into the ocean around 1880. So in 1871, construction began on the new lighthouse, and it was completed in October 1874, just 500 yards southwest from the original lighthouse. The light from this new lighthouse can be seen up to 24 nautical miles away. During World War II, the lighthouse was used as a lookout post for enemy ships and submarines. And with years and years of history, the ghostly tales that come out of here are something else. There are numerous spirits that haunt the lighthouse, from past lighthouse keepers to the spirits of young children. The St. Augustine Lighthouse is filled to the brim with ghosts both on the ground's living quarters, where many lighthouse keepers have resided over the years, and inside the lighthouse itself. Now, we need to talk about the role of a lighthouse keeper. It took a very special, unique kind of person to take on this role. This person had to understand the importance of the job, someone who recognized it as a service to others, saving lives. Well, who wouldn't want a job on the water with gorgeous views in every direction? because the job itself was just so lonely. Some of the strongest men would take on the position of a keeper just to quit soon afterward. You often work independently as a lighthouse keeper with a small group of people, so you have to enjoy the quiet, the solitude. It's just you and the sea. And the St. Augustine Lighthouse saw a number of keepers come through its doors, many not leaving with their lives. 
One of the most active parts of the lighthouse is the keeper's house basement. A few years after completion on the new lighthouse, a keeper or an assistant reportedly hanged himself in the very basement of the keeper's house. Ever since, it's had a feel, an energy. Countless employees and visitors have claimed to have seen a very tall, thin man in a blue suit lurking in the shadows in the basement. Locals and lighthouse employees refer to this ghostly figure as the man. He's dressed in a blue jacket and mariner's cap, many catching glimpses of the shadowy entity standing in the corners of the basement. Staff believe this is the ghost of Peter Rasmussen, who was the lighthouse keeper from 1901 to 1924. Peter is a bit of a legend in St. Augustine, as this was the longest stint of any keeper at the lighthouse. And he left his mark. He was described as a bit of a cranky man, having a strong dislike for tourists, and was a smoker, specifically cherry tobacco. Many report being hit with the odor of smoke out of nowhere in the area, as if someone was standing right next to them, smoking, even though the entire site is smoke-free and has been for years. Many believe this is Peter, making his presence known so many years later, still staking claim as the longest standing keeper, clearly continuing his role into the afterlife. The keeper's priority was the light and other aids to navigation, but they also cleaned, polished, did maintenance work, kept an eye on the water and on vessels that passed their way. Keepers would even receive calls from fishermen's wives asking for updates on their husband's whereabouts at sea. Keepers worked long, grueling hours and had to be willing to put their lives in danger to keep others safe. They had to work in all kinds of weather conditions, hurricanes, blizzards. This role was not for the faint of heart. Peter Rasmussen gave so much of his life to the lighthouse, so it isn't too surprising to think he's still connected to the place after death. There's a specific ghostly trio, a group of three young spirits that haunt the lighthouse. They are frequently seen and heard. As we know, construction on the new lighthouse began in 1871 and lasted about three years. This build was overseen by a man named Hezekiah H. Pitty. Hezekiah, along with his wife and their daughters, moved from Cape Elizabeth, Maine to St. Augustine while the project was underway, moving into a house on site. Oftentimes, Hezekiah's young daughters would come to work with their dad, playing with the other construction workers' children, turning the site into a playground of sorts. But one afternoon, there was a horrific tragedy. On July 10, 1873, two of Hezekiah's children, Eliza and Mary, along with one other girl who was unnamed in papers, believed to be a construction worker's daughter, jumped into the rail cart. This cart was used to transport supplies from the nearby pier to the lighthouse running from the construction site, high on the coastline, down to the water below. And the children's favorite game was pretending they were pirates, moving the treasure to a secret location. But tragically on this day, as the girls were in the cart, while rolling near the cliff's edge, the real cart came off the tracks, throwing the girls into the water below. They became pinned under the cart. A construction worker ran over and attempted to pull the girls from the water, but it was too late. The three girls drowned. After the funeral, the Pitty family returned to Maine to lay their daughters to rest in their hometown. But in the years since, it's quite evident that the young girls are still there, in spirit, as they are hands down some of the most active spirits around. Since their tragic deaths, countless people have seen and heard the ghosts of the girls at the lighthouse. Strange occurrences have been attributed to them. One story involved a relief lighthouse keeper who lived at the keeper's house in the 1950s. He was downstairs one day when from above, he heard what sounded like a group of kids running around upstairs. He went up to investigate, but no one was there. Another lighthouse keeper named James Pippin served from 1953 to 1955. He initially lived in the keeper's house, but moved out shortly after to a small cottage nearby swearing up and down the house was haunted and he would not stay another night in it. Many workers and guests report hearing the sound of children's laughter, giggling, playing games like hide and seek. The locks in the upstairs rooms will supposedly lock and unlock on their own, like a child is on the other side, playing with them. On another chilling occasion, 
One day, a woman was visiting the lighthouse and was out on the front lawn when she looked up to see a young girl in a red dress standing in the upstairs window of the keeper's house. The woman watched as the young girl flipped her long hair over her shoulder and then disappeared. Many employees claim to find children's dirty footprints in the keeper's house, which is surprising as this frequently happens when there are no children on the tours or in the lighthouse. A really eerie account came from a guest who was staying in the keeper's house in 1965. He was in his room when he looked up and reportedly saw a young girl standing in the doorway of the room he was staying in. And this wasn't a short encounter. He said this young girl was wearing a long lace dress and stared at him with a blank expression for several minutes. Minutes! The man sat there frozen, then he said she vanished before his very eyes. The girls are said to be very playful, their spirits. Many workers at the lighthouse say they'll look down to see their shoelaces have been untied. They have a tendency to gravitate towards moms, nurturing type people, and children their own age. These girls can be pranksters. One night, a lone staff member was closing up the lighthouse tower, when suddenly he heard giggling coming from the top of the tower. He believed he had left someone up there, but when he returned to the top, there was no one up there. As he began to head back down, he again heard the same giggling, this time coming from below. He quickly made his way down the steps, and again, not a soul in sight. The girls sometimes appear as fully formed apparitions, other times they're just heard. On another occasion, several years ago, during the day, a guest was exploring the maritime hammock trails close to the lighthouse when she came upon a young girl in a Victorian outfit sitting on a bench reading a book. This woman began to try to talk to the girl, asking her a question, when from the opposite direction, a group of people started walking towards her. Distracted by them, she looked away for just a moment or so. When she turned back, the little girl on the bench had disappeared. And this account blows my mind. You gotta hear this. One afternoon, a group was taking the ghost tour when one woman approached another woman complimenting her daughter's behavior on the tour, saying, wow, your daughter was so well-behaved, so polite. This woman watched as this young girl quietly walked alongside her mom the entire time. Confused, the woman said she didn't have a daughter. She was on the tour alone. This woman informed her that she had seen a little girl standing by her side most of the day. And after checking, both of them were stunned to realize there were no children on the tour. Ugh, who has goosebumps? I do. Now back to the keeper's house. The parlor is another hot spot for activity. Many hear strange sounds inside, specifically the sound of a gentleman coughing, as if someone is ill. Staff believe this is the spirit of William Harn, who spent a lot of time in the parlor room. William was one of the very first keepers of the lighthouse. He was from Philadelphia. He and his wife, Kate, moved into the lighthouse keeper's house, and he spent his final moments on the property, dying in the house of malaria and tuberculosis. To this day, the muffled sounds of a sickly man coughing can be heard when the parlor is completely empty. Others say that inside the parlor, they'll hear a long, drawn-out sigh as if someone walked in, sat down, and made themselves comfortable after a long day's work. There's also a rocking chair inside the lighthouse keeper's house that will rock violently back and forth on its own. One tour guide reportedly got so afraid of this specific chair rocking on one occasion, she screamed out, stop it, and the chair stopped in its tracks. The tour guide gathered up her group and they quickly walked back outside, not coming back to that room for the rest of the night. Many have also claimed to see the ghostly figure of a woman walking into rooms and down hallways. It's believed that this is William's wife, Kate, full of their spirits still lingering long after their deaths, still attached to the lighthouse. Another ghost that is extremely active at the lighthouse is often seen pacing the observation deck, 165 feet in the sky. December 1859, 60-year-old Joseph Andro, a keeper of the original lighthouse, fell to his death while whitewashing the outside of the lighthouse tower. A horrible accident. It said, the scaffold suddenly gave way and he was precipitated to the ground, killing him almost instantaneously. 
Joseph's obituary in the local St. Augustine Examiner detailed his death. Back in those days, it was customary to give sometimes very vivid details surrounding deaths. The article stating after falling, Joseph first struck the roof to the oil room 30 feet below, then glanced off and struck the stone wall which enclosed the lighthouse, then finally the ground, stone pavement. After his tragic death, Joseph's wife Maria took over as lightkeeper, making history as the first female lighthouse keeper for the U.S. in Florida. But she was heartbroken, often seen leaning over the edge of the lighthouse, looking down to the ground where her husband's body once laid. She went on to work at the lighthouse for years until she too passed away. And in years since, many have been stunned to see Maria's figure still roaming the tower, pacing. Her spirit has been seen at the top of the lighthouse, wearing a long white dress with her long hair down, still there, still looking over the edge. One man named Paul Winglowski, a former director of maritime education at the lighthouse, said there's a padlocked door at the top of the lighthouse that triggers an alarm when opened. They keep this door locked for security reasons. But he said on numerous occasions, staff would leave after locking up for the evening and come back the following morning to find that door open, the padlock unlocked, and the alarm never went off. Staff were initially really concerned and also puzzled. They reached out to the alarm company to come and investigate this. And the alarm company said they could find no reasonable explanation for how this happened on numerous occasions. The system was in perfect working order. This just didn't make any sense. Many believe this is Joseph and Maria, still roaming the lighthouse long after their deaths. As you've heard, so much of the activity at the lighthouse appears to be residual hauntings. These ghosts seen and heard tending to their roles at the lighthouse, just as they did when they were alive. And it seems that some of the spirits enjoy tourists, those who come and visit. On many occasions, staff say guests will come to them saying they were struggling to climb to the top of the lighthouse, but will suddenly feel a hand on their backs, kind of guiding them up to the top helpful spirits, but on other occasions, it can get much creepier. A man named Sammy Washburn, who has given tours of the lighthouse for over six years, said that things can get really scary at times. On one occasion, she said she was locked inside the lighthouse tower. The door shut and locked behind her and she couldn't get her tour group out. She said thankfully another staff member was with the group and was able to climb out the window and unlock the door. So you never know, you could visit the lighthouse and get a helpful push up the stairs or get locked inside. When looking at why there's so much activity at the St. Augustine Lighthouse, water is a medium between the physical and spiritual world and many believe that ghosts use water as a conduit for manifestation, drawing on the energy from the waters. This along with the history of the lighthouse, the tragedies it's seen, it's no surprise that it's haunted. And there are countless other haunted lighthouses in the United States. For example, the Tybee Island Lighthouse is a historic structure in Georgia, constructed in 1736. It's seen much of our nation's history, colonial America, the Civil War. In years since, many visitors have reported seeing floating bodies in the water from the tower, hearing strange whistling sounds with no one in sight. Another very spooky spot is St. Simon's Lighthouse in St. Simon's, Georgia. It was built in 1872 and was the site of a murder. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Murder at the lighthouse. Reports say one evening in 1880, the head lightkeeper, Frederick Osborne, got into a heated argument with his assistant, John Stevens. Together, the two kept the light operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This meant both the men's families shared tight quarters in the lightkeeper's house. It was cramped and things were growing tense. On this night, Osborne supposedly spoke in an inappropriate manner to the wife of the assistant. The dispute escalated and it ultimately ended with John Stevens shooting Frederick Osborne, the lighthouse keeper dying from his wounds. The assistant was charged with his murder but was later acquitted. So was justice served? No. And long after, many began reporting hearing and seeing strange things at the lighthouse. 
One account, published in 1908, described how the wife of the late keeper started to have problems with the mechanism of the lighthouse after her husband's death. She was becoming very overwhelmed with her grief and her duties. She remembered that Frederick had promised her that if she ever needed help, all she had to do was call for him and ask. So one day, in her frustration, she called out to him, and according to her, she looked up to see her husband's ghost standing right in front of her in the lighthouse. She was supposedly so overcome, so shocked, that she fainted. Many believe Osborne's death came so suddenly that he never stopped his nightly routine of inspecting the lighthouse. And his ghostly figure is frequently seen in and around the tower. Many also claim to hear strange footsteps going up and down the old spiral staircase late at night. So has he remained attached to the lighthouse out of loyalty to his job, his wife, or because of unfinished business? His killer walked free. There was no justice. I think we need to plan a haunted tour where we go and investigate these lighthouses across America. How amazing would that be? It's safe to say after this episode, I have a new fascination, haunted lighthouses. I would love to know if you have visited any of these spots and if you saw, heard, or experienced anything paranormal. I always love hearing your stories. I'm so glad you tuned in for today's episode. Mark your calendars for next time. I have another mystery coming up for you. Until then, I'm Avery Ross, and this is Avery After Dark.